So what are the challenges you faced on SQL Server till now? Yeah, there are like um, uh, recently we had uh, uh, some issue related to uh, replication, the transaction replication. So we do move uh, all schema changes. Uh, like once in a month so whatever the schema changes happened in the publisher so we uh, we gather all those changes and in one go we move other changes to uh, all subscribers so so when um, uh, it it when it is working uh, fine and the data is getting in slurs with all the subscribers so except for one uh, one table and one article we were getting like uh, uh, ANSI padding uh, ANSI padding uh, of a particular object and so we went into the source table and we checked the ANSI padding option for the table when you go to the table properties we do see that the option is turned on and uh, when you go and check so, so we searched a lot in Google and we went to some forums. So we kept that aside and we went through all other uh, pending things and we cleared all the things. So replication is working for all other articles. The only one article we still struggled. So I, we were four members uh, over the weekend. Uh, so we four members are trying to find in the five why it is uh, throwing that other. We take that other. We went to Google and we search a lot, but nothing. So then we finally thought we do. We ourselves uh, try to see what happened, what why it is taking. We started trial and error method. We tried a couple of options, but still it is not working. Then what uh, the, the final thing that we did is like uh, we went to the snapshot folder. And we opened dot sh file like snapshot files, so where uh, the script is uh, generated uh, from that snapshot. So when we open that sh file, there whatever the article that we had a problem like ANSI padding turn off there, it was generated the script with default ANSI padding off. So in that uh, file, what we have done, we have updated that uh, command with uh, ANSI padding on, and then we try to reinitialize uh, or we try to replicate that object so it went successful so yeah this is a very unique issue and there were no documentation we went through google the nothing was found it's a very unique thing we found and uh, we resolved the things we resolved that problem so this is very recent last weekend we had this problem okay okay so fine so what what are incidents uh, what are, what are, what type of incidents uh, uh, we will get <laughs> So we get all like um, uh, user access, uh, so like people will come to us saying that we are not able to access, we are not able to connect our SQL server and also performance related things and also uh, blockings and deadlocks and also job failures. Okay, so for all these things we, we have like uh, uh, alerts configured to remedy, so whatever the if something goes wrong in the system, automatically incident will be triggered in the remedy. And if some remedy, we get an automated email, and from there we uh, go ahead and start working on that particular instance. So any issues with the high availability data, synchronization issues, for everything we get incident. <coughs> okay. So recently, what type of incidents, uh, incidents you, you worked on? Like, give me any exa examples, you know, what kind of alerts alert, uh, will generate to you? So, by job failures, that is one common thing that we do take it, like, uh, daily, uh, daily that's like, uh, about a couple of, uh, uh, whenever we go to shift and in our shift, whatever the job failures we get, that we take as an incident and uh, we troubleshoot. And apart from that, the one uh, critical thing, critical incident, uh, so we got a request from customers saying that uh, uh, saying that uh, uh, the queries are running slow. So when, when I, I said, so this is the queries are running slow is very common and but here the uniqueness is like uh, he is telling uh, queries are. Uh, uh, basically, he's trying to pull a report from front end. Uh, mm -hmm. When he ran the report uh, first time, 
the, the report is generated uh, within few seconds. So in the mm -hmm. subsequent times, whenever he is trying to pull the report, uh, it, is, it is going uh, beyond 10 minutes and 15 minutes. So same stored procedure is being called from the back end, but, um, uh, but the user is complaining that my report is taking more time sometimes and sometimes it is working fine. So, so as a DJ, what you did? Yeah, that's what I'm coming to. So we uh, take that stored procedure, the what was the stored procedure. First we enable the trace, like a server side trace in the production and we try to capture what exactly happening in the system. The thing that we identified uh, from the, the production trace is like uh, so whenever he executed uh, the stored procedure first time, he has uh, selected a date range of one week. So for example, there are parameters called start date and end date, and he has given a 1st December 2015 to 7th December 2015. And we executed that report as it was first time. The SQL server has generated a uh, execution plan, and the plan was cached. And whenever he is trying to pull the report for uh, say six months or one year or more than one year. So what is happening behind the scene? The SQL server is trying to use same execution plan that was generated as part of one week date range. So and considering that it is assigning, uh, it is estimating one week results and considering that it is assigning resources to that particular query. And what are the resources that are assigned to pull the data for one week are not sufficient to pull for six months or uh, one year. So because of that, it is taking more time. So upon that, uh, so, so we, we with, a, with some more little research, we concluded this is related to parameter sniffing. And then okay. uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, as per the Microsoft recommendation, we have implemented offset recompile as a hint. Uh, then we, we tested it in Dell. So it went fine and we promoted same thing to patch, uh, we patched out same thing to production and then we are kind of monitoring since last 10 days and we don't see that problem again and the customer is happy at the end of the day. Okay, so what are the counters you selected? Uh, like uh, you said the stored procedure for uh, no, turning... Events, so basically we, we selected events like one is the execution plan and uh, another in, and the SP started and SP ended and uh, like statement started and statement ended and then uh, and and then we and then uh, we uh, selected appropriate columns like reads, writes, and uh, duration. So based on that, we measured all the required uh, fields for that particular query. Okay. For execution plan, we selected XML show so XML plan. Okay. So what is meant by index seek and index scan? So those are the index operations. So when uh, uh, if uh, so index scan means, say for example. Uh, I have a table with two columns like ID and name. So, and I am creating an index on, I have an index and ID column and in my select query, so my predicate also on ID column. Like in where condition I am putting like uh, where ID equal to 1G to 1 or ID is less than something or greater than something. So both index and ID are on same column. So in that case, so it, it uh, comes as an index seek because we are giving whatever the value, whatever the value that we are using as a predicate and on the same column, we are having an index and it will go and seek that particular value from the index. So it performs index seek operation. and. I have index and ID column and my predicate is name, like where name equal to something. So index scan will give good performance or index seek? So obviously index seek, but we need to like, uh, depending on some cases, index scan may give better performance. So we need, for, to come up with a better index, uh, we need for, for that scenario, for our, uh, uh, for our uh, requirement, we need to test it in the environment thoroughly and so then we can, uh, Go with the other for implementing uh, index scanner in next week. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you work there always, sir? I have basic knowledge, but uh, I did not get a chance to work on this one. Okay. What about Windows cluster? I mean, sorry, uh, SQL cluster. Clustering, I have worked. Yeah. Okay. So what are the IE available features? 
So we have log spring mirroring transaction replication and the first string. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's say example. Uh, okay, one of the CPU is replacing almost 99 percent. So how do you how do you check and troubleshoot? Yeah, the CPU. We need to check what is exactly running in the system at that point of time. So so. Uh, Okay, yeah, I need, uh, tell me some DMVs and the queries, how so do you we can, check? Yeah, we can, we can run sister DM underscore EXCC requests or EXCC sessions and EXCC mm -hmm. connections to find what exactly running at that point of time in the system. And also if there are any, uh, like, if to perform, like, to see if there is a, which process is, uh, consuming more CPU and we can run some DMVs to identify the weight states, like, uh, Sister DM, sister DM underscore OS underscore weight tasks and weight types. And from there, uh, then we can also see uh, by running a sister DM underscore OS underscore ring buffers, we can see the statistical uh, CPU usage information and query wise. So by using this, we can uh, uh, come to know what, uh, which, uh, process, which SQL process is consuming more CPU. And in our case, mostly, uh, we we have data warehouse loads are occurring in our, our India data. So sometimes um, the queries get stuck and uh, uh, the other resources uh, queries get stuck and uh, then um, uh, and it, it will not release the required resources and sometimes some of the query, some of the processes uh, uh, hang on and. Uh, the color having that high CPU and high memory. In such cases, we find we found those queries. We found those queries, and then we we kill that particular transaction to avoid the to avoid impact in other other areas of the SQL. Okay. So uh, let's say example, uh, one of the table is uh, dropped uh, in developer cell. Okay, how do you recover that table? So the so so table is dropped accidentally. And we need to recover that you know, table back to the production rate. Right? So if you go for any third, if, if there are any third party tools for backup, and we can perform a, a table level, object level restores. And if you don't have that, then no, we have the only option like we need to restore uh, the transaction log backup with the stop at option. And we need to mention the time just before the drop occurred. So we can, with that, we can bring the table back to the system. Okay. Okay, so what is degree of parallelism? So degree of parallelism is the basically parallelism is anything but like um, uh, parallelizing the query across multiple processes. So for that, the so degree of uh, parallelism is the amount uh, uh, the threshold of. Of threshold with, from where uh, the query has to parallelize. Like, say, for example, one query, it's a simple query. If you put a degree of parallelism as a zero or one, so so for all the queries, it will try to for each and every query that is coming to that particular SQL, it will try to parallelize. So the parallelism is required when uh, for larger queries, like where. Uh, uh, where the query is taking more time and it's very complex query and that has to be uh, uh, passed among multiple processes and the G of parallelism is something the value that we can define uh, whenever it reaches to that threshold then only parallelize this, this query. Okay. 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 So what is the use of update statistics? So update statistics, uh, basically statistics is uh, the one of input to come for SQL Server to come up with a better ex optimal execution plan for, for any particular query. So if you don't update statistics and uh, the statistics will be outdated and uh, so because of the SQL Server may come up with a bad or uh, bad execution plan and that leads to uh, run our queries slower. So to all that as part of our regular maintenance, we'll have our uh, update statistics as a regular task. Okay. So let's say backup is running for quite long time. So how do you find out estimation uh, time? So we can... 
what is the command you use? So we can, uh, when you put the stats uh, in the backup option, like the backup database, database can do this with the stats and it will give us the progress. And, uh, and also just when you go to uh, the uh, process is running and it can give you since how long it is running, how much percentage it is completed and from there what the remaining, uh, how much time it takes, then we can calculate.